Today we'd like to welcome to our studio Tarana Taylor. Tarana is a highly accomplished international museum and educator, and we're very fortunate to have you here in Houston. Thank you. Welcome to our studio. Thank you. Wonderful. Nice. Well, I'd like to start at the beginning, because when I look at your bio and all of the um, wonderful things that you've created uh, throughout your career, um, let's start at the beginning and kind of share with our audience, because I'm sure we're very interested in how you started and what some of the influences were that uh, kind of took you to where you are today, or to have taken you to where you are today. Um, yeah, I always wanted to play piano. We didn't have piano at home, and, okay. and then nobody in my family played piano. But uh, I had just you know a small child obsessed about pianos, and wherever we went and they had pianos, I would be like, I am staying here. You can go <laughs> home. And then uh, my uh, parents decided that uh, if I am so much uh, into that, I need to start. Did playing. your parents? Did you have music in? Were your parents musicians or did no? No, okay. none of them had even music education. Um, actually, uh, it was something strange for them. Like, why would child without uh, even hearing that would be so much into music? Like, why would child? Like, we had this old radio with uh, keys. Like, you know, how you ch change key, like uh, the channels with that. So I will be sitting in front of that and playing it as if I am playing. And then uh, kind of like I would imagine that people are so happy and they're applauding. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so they saw me like doing it. I was maybe four, four or five years old. And uh, I guess they decided that was that, that was thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't like something like they chose for me as a profession. My mom always wanted me to be doctor. Doctor. Yeah. So you're a doctor of music. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So you, when did you come to the States and how did that, you, you studied abroad, right, in your home country? Yes. In Abashajan. And then, so you, you, that's where you have your master's, you have a master's. Tell us a little bit about your music education as well. Yeah. Because you also have a, an MBA in marketing and, and, yes, and a business side as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I uh, went to music school in a system where I studied. We had um, along with secondary school, like where you, you go uh, to study, after that, every day we would go to music school. Well, and it was just not just, you know, piano playing. Uh, it was music history, it was choir, it was uh, ensemble playing together, accompanying to somebody. So every day of week we were busy with music. doing something uh, about music. And uh, at some point I didn't want to do it, but uh, my mom said, no, if you started, you have to finish. <laughs> so I, I am grateful now that she actually did that. And I uh, went by the time when I started, uh, like I, I was uh, in a fifth or se second grade, and uh, I realized that I am playing actual music and I start enjoying it. Because, you know, learning process can be difficult for kids enjoy, but when you start actually seeing Did results. Did you have a specific teacher that was an influence to you or a school? Or? I wouldn't say that in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, so my, I had a teacher, uh, six years I had the same teacher and I, was, I never thought that she actually enjoyed teaching. Hmm. Yes, so it was kind of like, okay, you know, come and it's a certain time you are doing it. But because I liked doing it myself, so if uh, like teacher would give me four pieces from this book to play, I would play whole book. I would read. Mm -hmm. I, I like how you know uh, uh, people like reading books. I r like reading notes. So that's why my sight reading became better. But last year, uh, which we had to go seven years to that school, uh, last year my teacher left, and I insisted that I wanted to go another teachers. Uh, like I chose the teacher. And if even everybody said, oh, she's scary, she's um, very strict, and but I wanted to be her student. And uh, actually in her class, after a couple of days, uh, I realized that I want to be a musician. So much I enjoyed it. And you, is she still teaching? To be honest, is that a shame? I don't even know where she is because by that time, like when I was finishing, she moved to Moscow. Okay. She you was studied moving. in Moscow as well, haven't you? Yes, did I you? did a little bit in a school, mm -hmm. yeah, but uh, then I was b uh, back in Baku and uh, then uh, she was leaving, so I didn't, uh, I lost connect, uh, connection. Sure. But then I went to a music college, uh, four years I studied there, where actually I, uh, I had this devoted teacher who 
would sometimes when I do that same thing at home and nobody understands me like why you would keep the child in your house so he will practice uh, and uh, but that child actually likes it being in my house and mm -hmm. practicing and I went through that too it's because uh, my teacher wanted to be there when I practice to hear everything what I am doing like she would be doing on her own things in in the kitchen, and then she'll be like, "No, that wasn't right. Like, do it again." <laughs> like, and uh, I sometimes realize that I am doing the same thing. But um, do you find an influence when yes. you teach as well? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Same yeah. Same that teacher. I mean, she was very uh, like a patient person, very uh, encouraging, uh, nice. You, you have such a broad um, bio of how what you play your repertoires and the genres that you play, how would you classify yourself as a musician? Um, as a classical, are you classically trained? I am trained? classically trained. Okay. Like after that four years in college, I went five years into the music academy okay. where <clears throat> that's all we did. We, we did five years of just studying uh, music on different levels, on um, different, uh, like name me any subject about music, we studied it. Sometimes I don't So the remember. education piece is very yeah. important. Yes, yes, it is very important. And we talked a little bit about that before, you no? Know, with even with your students, you like to give them the kind of the path of where the music starts and right. understand it, right? Yeah, so like I uh, give them, I want to play, I want them to play Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, Chopin, but I don't want them to be blind and play only that piece and now how they play it. First of all, I encourage them to read as much as possible and I want them sometimes to do it on their own like say if she says uh, oh I want to do um, um, release or I know to see this piece I'm like okay well done okay here's music go and start doing it I will see what you are doing actually you cannot just copy what I am doing you have to think you are an uh, intelligent person right yes, <laughs> and then uh, when they are playing it if you don't know about the time composer lived if you don't know about style they wrote in uh, their music, you will just play everything same way. Right. You won't understand the difference between different composers and different Absolutely. way of playing. And it doesn't matter how much I tell you, oh, you know this, here, breathe, here, take mm -hmm. your hand here, but uh, it is just copying again. It's right. not uh, understanding it. But that's why I have, um, I'm trying to have it more, but um, it depends on how fast they read. I give them, uh, I tell them what books to read. Like let's say next our um, composer will be Haydn. So we did Bach, we did Mozart, uh, Beethoven, but we missed Haydn because I wanted them to know better, Stop, right. uh, uh, like uh, Haydn t uh, mm -hmm. influence, like Haydn influenced Mozart. Uh, did teach Beethoven. Mm -hmm. So now let's go back and see what kind of composer he right. was, right? Sure. So it's, it's, I uh, tell them what book to read. And after they read, we get together, we uh, basically spend a nice fun time together. So it's a collaboration with all of your students? With yes, many students yeah. I mean, it's more we talked a little bit about that, right? It's kind of, you're by yourself here. The pianos, you, you play, you spend a lot of time by yourself. Yes, they are like, uh, it, it is kind of like a lonely profession. You are on your own. And uh, uh, even like I played, let's say, for, I play for ballet company, uh, uh, companies. But still, you are at piano there, you are watching them, you are in your heart, you are joining all that, but you are not with Amazing. them actually. Right. And class finished, you are like, yeah, okay, thank you very much, thank <laughs> you, bye, now I have to go. So yes, uh, that's why um, that music history classes are really good for them, they love it, they enjoy. So we spent like two and a half hours and three hours sometimes together, talk about what you remember from this book, what uh, like, um, tell each other like sometimes uh, like what was most funny things about this composer and then uh, we do, do this lap book uh, which I purchased in a uh, Joy Morin's uh, company um, we uh, it is kind of like a book where you open and it's everything about this composer basically oh. and yeah. like what country it's uh, he's from Germany find Germany and mm -hmm. in this map and uh, Mark of Germany, and uh, like uh, he wrote uh, in uh, what time? Is it Baroque? Or is it classical? Mark that, like kind okay. of like doing things through. Uh, so it's interactive. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that way they better 
they understand yeah, it, right. but better they apply uh, remember it. Yeah. yeah it's not just like oh Beethoven what is the most interesting fact and she says He's deaf. He's he was deaf. <laughs> I'm like, no, that wasn't the most interesting part. <laughs> yes, that was a, a part of his life, but oh, he did this, he did that, and so they now better. And uh, finally, all of them, they told me that in the schools where they go, um, they kind of like music teachers in schools. They appreciate that. You have that. to be very proud of that. Yeah, they say, Good oh, answer. they tell me, so you don't answer, you know. It's like <laughs> they ask something class and they no, you don't answer. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. They appreciate that. They are right. better prepared for kids. Right, yeah. absolutely. So, Tarina, we're talking a little bit about the students and the education. So yeah. that's a very big piece, right? So they understand not just uh, basic things about the music, but the composer and how he composed Compo and what he can write. Right, yes. and their pieces like they say, oh, I heard this piece before, but I didn't know that it yes. was Mozart music, or I... Uh, they connect. Yes, yes. connect, yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, which is, for me, it's more important than them playing in competition, which I don't mind. Mm -hmm. I am quite... Do you play in the competitions, your students? I, uh, what is that my like? students, I am uh, actually preparing to girls for uh, next 2019, so uh, they already me a couple of times in the exams that Fantastic. they pass with merits and the, the distinction so I thought is they the could competition try. both um, is it is it is it a literal is, is it lit literary? No, it's performing it's all performing yeah, okay yeah. so one girl actually she is doing what you are talking about uh, mm -hmm. uh, she is doing theory exam mm -hmm. for grade five she's just 11 years old uh, she will do grade five uh, ABRSM uh, piano and theory exam at the end of the year so we are getting prepared at the same time, okay. theory, p piano, performing, and uh, uh, this um, competition. So they must be like your children, right? They, you watch yeah, them that's, grow. Right? That's the uh, thing then. about, you know, like I t sometimes tell uh, parents, uh, like, uh, like today the girl was um, not doing something right. And I, s I told, I am in a good relationship with mom. I said, oh, I'm so pleased I don't have children. <laughs> <laughs> because she said, yeah, can you imagine 24 hours of right. this? <laughs> yeah. Because uh, it's hard. It's, uh, but um, when it, uh, it's your students, you are having all the fun. Right. Yeah, sometimes you get nervous because you want them to achieve a lot. I am, uh, I'm, I won't say I'm achiever. Uh, I, I am not very ambitious person. I, I but just- you discipline. I just, yes, I am disciplined and I, whatever I am doing. And you're very focused in how you approach your music. Yeah, right? what I have, whatever I am doing, it should be good. Okay. Yeah, and uh, if I am teaching my students, I, I shouldn't be embarrassed of my students that don't know he plays and like, nah. <laughs> uh, how many students do you have in your, um, your studio? That's a really funny yeah. question because I never know answer. <laughs> you know, um, it's not the way I studied, like music schools, you go in the beginning of the year um, and you are like whole year there and the school knows how many students you have. But uh, um, I realized in the Western uh, society that they don't have time. The schools are very busy, they have lots of other activities. Of Some of them are devoted. Like I have this girl who is six years with me. And even when I was in Houston Bell and I didn't want I didn't have time to teach, to be honest. Like, um, and I told told her parents that you know I don't think it's a good idea because um, I won't be able to do every uh, week same time lesson, mm -hmm. right? But they uh, wanted me to teach. That's why uh, they just went through all that uh, trouble and uh, they stayed with me. But some uh, students don't. You know, some. Uh, some are pleased. Actually, that first family who is six years with me, they are bringing more and more ch children and they are um, uh, other children. They won't. So I am teaching the, uh, a boy from the same family. And now the youngest one wants and I said that uh, I, I'll try. And the uh, brother says, oh, no, you shouldn't because he's not five years old. And you said you are not teaching before five, why you didn't teach me when I now you are teaching him? <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of like I cannot uh, ever say that, oh, I have uh, so, so many students. And some of them, they come twice a week. They come twice a week. Yeah. Toronto, what would be a message you would say to parents um, about 
the the path for a child to really understand the music and really focus and discipline. It must be difficult for you to have a child come and really not be dedicated and say, you know, this may not be the right path path for you. Um, what would you say to a parents? Uh, I never say it's not right path for you because okay. it's uh, for me. It's uh, mostly it is about education. Yes, uh, some of them start showing amazing results, and you can see that this child has a gift. And you tell parents that, you know, maybe we should think about more things. And sometimes parents say, I don't want them to be stressed about this. I don't want, I, and which is understandable, because the world of competition and achieving something, it's is, it is yeah. hard. You yeah. don't want to push child who you think that uh, maybe emotionally is not ready into that. So um, as far as they are learning something, not always maybe enjoying, but the, uh, when one day they will grow up and they will be like, oh, I know who is Bach, right. who is Beethoven, I played this piece of uh, Mozart or uh, Chopin I played, like that will make them better educated people uh, and more interesting to uh, I think more interesting I think so people. too yeah. yes absolutely you, you give them a, a well-rounded even if they decide that they don't want to stay you know in, in playing in the, right. you know, if, if piano is not yeah. the right path for them and right. like how uh, children are different parents are different too so absolutely. some parents come with ideas that we are doing all exam we are get, getting all credits we are getting into mm -hmm. a competition you have to slow them down because <laughs> it's all good the child has and to catch I up. love yes. those right. parents because they are taking control, they mm -hmm. are kind of like making sure the child practice, which is essential part of education. If you don't practice every day, at least, I, uh, I know, depending what age you are, what uh, level you are, you will be in the same level, you'll just change books, you will play different pieces, but it will all be we'll same, same same level pieces. But uh, some of them, they just, they say, oh, I want it for fun. It's going to be very gratifying for you as a teacher and educator of music when you see a child that's really gifted, right? And that's really passionate yes. about what they're dedicated. It's just natural. It's a natural. Yeah. Right? Unfortunately, not always uh, talent comes with hardworking mm -hmm. uh, personality. Right. And sometimes when you see all that together, uh, yes, it is, uh, I believe I have a girl one day maybe I will, if she continues like that, maybe I will tell her, I will take her to a higher level teacher. Because, uh, I mean, you need to understand where is your limit you can give to that child, sure. right? And uh, if she continues like that, I mean, she will achieve. And yes, I will take her myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, when she, she plays like that, they, like, not just her, like some of them, they play. Sometimes I uh, can hear how they imitate me. <laughs> like uh, in a way of I am playing and sometimes you just you cannot believe that wow it is my uh, student uh, and uh, achieved uh, so much <laughs> and doesn't uh, um, uh, I tell them don't compare with each other don't uh, when in recitals especially don't think oh you know that girl is playing this please you are all different you are all different age different uh, way of understanding, different way of feeling music, but the fact that you are working hard is uh, already good. It's good Absolutely. for um, your brain, your uh, personality, that you can sit and do something That's till right. it happens. Yeah. yeah, there's all kinds of studies about, you know, the discipline of, of learning music, right, on different levels. You know how that transforms to your life and in, in later in your adult life. There's yes, like, yeah, right. like same like uh, belly dancers. Like uh, you see those kids, how much they are uh, working or professional athletes. Yeah, doesn't right? doesn't matter yeah. if they are become, becoming like famous belly dancer or a professional. Uh, like they are spending time right. to sit and do something till it happens. Absolutely. Yeah.